Have you guys ever heard of the company Hims? H I M S? Mm. If you go to fourhims.com, it's a one stop shop for all um, problems that men have hair loss, erectile dysfunction. They have actually doctors on staff that you can talk to, and um, they can give you prescriptions for medical grade for, solutions. Yeah, for medical grade solutions. And um, it, this is a really convenient thing, guys. Tell them about it, Gil. Yeah, guys, you can actually order right now. Our Tiger Belly listeners get a trial month of Hims just for five dollars today. I can't believe it. Right now, while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. Go to fourhims.com slash belly. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash belly. Fourhims.com slash belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Namaste. Bien. Mucho gusto bailar. Hola, que tal? All that. Nosotros papaya for sure, 100%. All day, every day, Hollywood nights. Yeah. You guys get it. Now, listen. My name is Captain Bob. And I am the leader of this group. Um, I don't control you. There's no me too's in this invo involved in this. Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing sexual, but I am the leader mm -hmm. and I'm your master. But there's no control. <laughs> but you're my, you're a master. Whatever. Okay. He's yeah. Our puppet you get master. it. Yes. I'm your puppet master. Okay. We have here. I don't even know why I do introductions. <laughs> okay, awesome. because I do it every time. <laughs> but we have Coloco, Kalila, aka. We've got. The beautiful Gilbert, because I always make fun of you. Thank you. So I always say flat face and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do that right now. You have the beautiful oh, thank Gilbert. You. You, have the beautiful. you have the beautiful. You have a beautiful thank you. Gilbert. We've got um, pristine, conditioned, <laughs> right? <laughs> Up to par, you know, ready to go. Sterile George. Sterile George. <laughs> you know, we have the factory made, right? Sterile as in clean. High quality, okay. yeah. high quality <laughs> George Kimmel. Wow. High quality. A high quality. Make conditions. Okay. Squeaky clean. And we've got, again, me. Okay? The best. Mm -hmm. the and the worst at the same time. Now, um, I cannot begin this podcast without bringing up something that happened the other day, a couple nights ago. And I'm just, there's, there's no way to tell it. I just have to tell it. <laughs> there's no way to tell it, but I just have to tell you it. You get what I'm saying, yeah, though, yeah, right? Yeah. And you don't have to, because I'm traumatized. You don't have to do that right now. You're right. I'm sorry. Correct me. Okay? I'm your puppet master. <laughs> All right? So the other day, um, Coloco's mom, Meritus, and I, I'm going to give up some information. She cleans my house on Sundays. Can I say that? She cleans her house all the time. All the time. It's and her she favorite does, hobby She's better world. than Mexicans. She's better. She's than better than any Mexican. Any that robot would do it. you can make in China. She goes underneath. She goes yeah, above. She's the best. She goes in between. It's just her and favorite. She cleans hobby. all the rust. Every time she dust. comes over, she has to clean. Yeah, because I'm a nasty fucker, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. I've come on the walls, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My bad. My point is this: she's cleaning. We have Kalila's, um, I guess sister. She's my sister. Not biologically. She's your cousin. She's my yeah. She's technically my cousin, but my but, dad. Uh, my dad adopted okay, her when she was thirteen, so she's my sister. Honey, his her sister, sis, quote unquote sister. My sister. And um, her two kids are here. My nieces, Jules mm -hmm. and Izzy. Mm -hmm. Izzy's about ten, and how old is Jules? Sixteen. She's sixteen, and um, she's so thin she might as well not exist. <laughs> She might as well just be nothing. Paper thin. Yeah. <laughs> she is so, so I'm in this She's podcast so room because this is what the room I use when I want to enjoy a meal and want to get away from it. Mm. So I'm watching YouTube videos. I think I was watching some BGT. I just got talent. I was eating some food. Mm -hmm. Having a good time. And this is what I hear. Mama? Mama? Call 911! Call 911! Okay. I don't get up right away. <laughs> it takes me a second mm. to Which, absorb the information. That oh, I got. you're processing it. Okay. Right. Call 911. Call 911. Mama. You know, all that stuff. I get up. I open the door. And this is what I see. Kalila has Meritus in a Heimlich. It, is, it was a move developed by a guy named Friedrich Heimlich. By in the 1940s, I looked it up. Wow, right, and he was a um, 
he's a physician, but he's also it was a, a chiro. They didn't call it chiropractic chiropractor mm-hmm. back then, and he knew the, the the instrument, the body within, and um, basically Kalala's mom, who's Filipino, had um, taken a gigantic ball of rice. She swallowed it. You make it sound like I want to laugh, but I was I'm traumatized. I, I know because right? I keep looking at Kalala. Her lips keep. She ate up. Uh, right. By the way, I made up the Friedrich Heimlich thing. You did? Oh, yeah. That's, not, that's not real. Damn, oh. you're good. All right, so I, I I apologize for the lie. Okay. Okay. Tell the story. So she got a big ball of rice. Well, little backstory. My mom has a little a form of dysphagia and trouble swallowing, and rice is one of her trigger foods. Uh-huh. So, but she's never had like a real choking incident in the past. She's always just needed to kind of drink water afterwards to kind of clear her, you know, um, her esophagus. So basically, I'm sorry, I'm eating. Basically, Meritus is blue, dying. Kalila is giving her the Heimlich from Frederick Heimlich. Mm. And she's doing it, and she's doing it probably repeatedly like 40, 50 times. I mean, it's getting... it seemed like that. But as I... time goes on, right, you know that it's not going to be good. So she's like, call 911. I'm looking around. The kids are screaming, screaming. crying. My her, sister, her sister, who is who a are, nurse. Her, I'm going to call her Sir William Wallace because of her bravery. Who, me? Honey. <laughs> <laughs> I know her why. sister, I know why. Sir William Wallace, <laughs> Sir Braveheart, <laughs> has her body completely turned away. Like from, the mum- from the situation. And mumbling and shaking and mumbling. She's a nurse. Yeah. She knows basic life support, but I'm telling you guys, yeah. when it's a family member, it's a different feeling. And I think I felt the same way where, like, even though I sprung into action and I was doing the Heimlich, I was so emotional and crying at the same time that I might not have been as effective as I would have been helping somebody else. And my sister's, my sister who's helped so many people in the past, mm. seriously froze, turned around, and was just shaking in a corner. Oh. She was just wanting it to if be over If you have a heart attack head. or something emergency happens, you don't want honey in this situation. Well, you do because if if she's not, if you're not if her you're family. Re- if you're related to her, you don't want her in this situation. Yeah, if you're related to her, she cannot help you. So I see two phones on the couch. Now, Claire's screaming at the top of her lungs, call 911. Okay. I look at the at the fucking two phones on the couch. I can't. I don't know where mine is. I go, come on, give me the phone, and no one's giving me the phone. They, they're like the phone. No one's giving me the fucking phone. The kids are screaming. Also, their phones don't have American. Service. You can't go. Let me ask you this though. You can't call nine one one on uh, that kind of phone. Mm-mm. Interesting. They only operate on Wi Fi. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, anyway, no one's handing me the phone. So you didn't have your phone on. You. I didn't know where it was. Because I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, I find I, Jules runs into the bedroom. I know. She's sweating. And I run in with her, and she hands me Kalila's phone. We call 911. And then you can hear the rice come out like it came out. Yeah. Flung and you know, hit the ground. Whoa. Yeah, right? and then you, all you heard was, <gasps> like yeah, that, finally yeah, she that, could, that, took a breath. Right. I'm calling them all, and also I'm I'm gonna find this lady's name. The fucking open the door. What's going on? Dog, Dog wants in. The lady, what's her name? The what do they call it? The operator. No. That's what you call it. Yeah. The operator. Yeah. The operate. How do you say it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Operate. The operator is a fucking <laughs> cunt. Oh, okay. Didn't know that I'm a call. Get the ambulance, she, sir. Before I do that, I have to ask some questions first. Mm. Okay. Well, go ahead. Don't talk to me like that, sir. She said that. Yeah, calm down. Right? I go, go ahead. She goes, tell me, how old is the woman? Oh, fuck this bitch. I want to fucking gouge her eyes out. I don't know. It's 58. Okay. What's going on? Call the 911. Call the ambulance. Calm down, sir. Okay, I'm calm. I mean, this is the conversation I'm having with this woman. So two minutes goes by. I try, I'm trying to tell her what's going on. All right. Next, I, I called the ambulance. Next time, you have to just be more calm. And I just hung up on this bitch. And if I see her in the streets, I'm going to punch her vagina. Why her vagina? Because that's, I know how to do it. 
No. He, he knows the technique. Yeah, I know the technique. <laughs> I gouge. I, I, I go underneath. The clitoral hood. The cl- yeah. And I do the clitoral hood. Yeah, that- the clitoral hood. <laughs> uppercut. The clitoral hood uppercut. <laughs> yeah, uh, uppercut. They specific. know. They know. Right? Bobby and knows. what I do is when I get up there and I punch, right? I take my two knuckles <laughs> and I clinch the clit and I pull it out. Ah. That's right? like some Mortal Kombat. You want a clit, stuff. bitch? Anyway, the ambulance comes. By that time, I had already... Are you crying at that point or what's going on? I'm not crying. I don't cry in situations like that because I'm in full fight or flight mode. Yeah. And I have adrenaline. I don't think that one can cry at that moment. Um, But I was, I just like, I was so tired because I'm carrying this like, you know, adult. And I'm thrusting so much and like the, like. Oh my God. The best of my ability and it's not working. And at that moment, I felt like such a failure, like. Why isn't it dislodging? Yeah. And I realize now that maybe rice is a little bit harder to dislodge than like maybe a chicken bone. Mm-hmm. But still, like I was so freaked out, and I might be scarred for. It's- so the ambulance come. They do their thing. They come up. They ask questions. Should we bring her this? Should we, the hospital? She seems fine. She's Merit is going. I'm fine. I'm okay. You know. They leave. And I just basically said, Merit, you're not going home. You're staying here. We had to keep an eye on you. Yeah, and I spent the whole night. I made her sleep in the living room, and I watched her sleep until she woke up. Yeah. I could not. I was so frightened for my mom. And this was Mother's Day. You know, like we now, had such a good day. It was just fucking scary. I'm in the other room trying to sleep. And I'm thinking, what would what, you think? You in the other room? Sleeping? Yeah, what would you think after an event like that? You'd probably be like somewhat traumatized. No, this is what I thought. <laughs> I false. I was not. Which he's shared with my mom, so it's what all What kind good. of Asian doesn't know how to eat rice? <laughs> that's the whole thing. It's like you're Asian. You sh- that's the one thing you should know how You've to eat. You've been training since day it's one. It's rice, right? Yeah. It's like it's like a Mexican choking on frijoles. Frijoles. <laughs> you mean or an Italian choking on spaghetti? Mm. You should know how to eat rice, lady. All right, that's shameful. <laughs> that, that that there's a flaw in the thing. Yeah, yeah. In the gene. Yeah. We all okay. honestly he came out of the room and he had this like epiphany, right? <laughs> and we were all we were all sitting in the in the chair. Yeah. And I know it was such a stressful situation, yeah. but the moment he's like, Meritus, what kind of Asian does not know how to eat rice? It was <laughs> this is right. Everyone after. just like this is not. I'm not doing it as a joke, by the way. Yeah, yeah. This is like I need to know the answer. We yeah. burst out laughing so hard, and it was such like a much needed like comedic relief, relief yeah. at that moment. So at five in the morning, Kalada comes back into my room to sleep. No, it's like eight in the morning. Eight, eight in the morning. I can't sleep. I haven't slept the whole time. Mm. I'm just laying there. She lays next to me, and then I close my eyes, and I, she's asleep, and I just start weeping. I start crying. I it was I was so traumatic. I've never been in it. I to see her mom blue, almost dying, right? And just you know, it it, it is it it put my life. It, it was a, a, an awakening I had. About how fragile life is and all that stuff. And more importantly, my mom is somebody who's so regimented and because she suffers from OCD and she has like very like high anxiety and a lot of fears. So her life is very calculated and she never takes risks ever. She's when I ask her if she wants to travel with me, she's always like, no, I don't fly. She doesn't do a lot of things because she has fear. And I told her, what does this tell you? You were in the company of your family. You were eating rice. And you almost died. I don't care how what what measures you take to not die. You can die in 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 the comfort of your own home. So you might as well start living. And I think it changed her a little bit. She's like, you know and what? You're also, right. Also, you just don't die from eating rice <laughs> because I, that's I, on your tombstone, <laughs> right? That's how you're remembered. Okay, car accident, yeah. right? You know, a terrorist attack. Yeah. You know, something like that, mm-hmm. right? Not eating rice. What would it say on the tombstone? Bitch died from eating rice. Bobby Lee. <laughs> By Bobby Lee. By Bobby Lee. <laughs> By Bobby Lee. Paid extra thousand yeah, dollars yeah. for that. I'd spray paint that on there. <laughs> okay. What was my face like? Oh my! Oh, it's like you know what, guys. What was traumatic also about it is the way, as time went on, she has her mom in the Heimlich, mm-hmm. 
and it's not dislodging. And the you know, it just as time goes on, the more panic, right? And the screaming. People are screaming at the top of their lungs. Gosh. It was um you know, it was the most traumatic thing I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of things. But that because I do love Meritus. And obviously I love Kalila. And um I'm just glad it ended in that way. Mm-hmm. Because in any other way, we'd be not doing this right now. Yeah, we'll never. I'll never be the same after Me either. that. I, That's I, after I went to Mitzi's funeral. Yeah, it was right after. Oh, right after. I went to Mitzi Mitzi Shore's funeral, and I spent five hours, four hours there, and to, to and then to witness that. Oh my god. That's why we're recording on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. Yeah, because we couldn't because do it yesterday. Like yesterday, we just needed time to decompress and sure. sort of find a way to make light of it, which is really hard. Like the turnover, because I was like, okay, like how how do I shake this feeling of like I, I just keep running it back in my head? Could I have done better? Could I have been more effective, faster, less panicked? You know. And then we were both feeling like shit. So what Bobby did, which was like the nicest thing ever, is that he took everybody that was in that room that day, and he took us on Gal- He took us on a field trip to Little, to Tokyo. Little Tokyo, and we had such a blast. Last and we night. went to the restaurant, and, and, I, and I said no rice for her. <laughs> <laughs> did I not? I said no, no. I said the waitress. And then we all no, no, no under any conditions, <laughs> no rice for that. And they're like, <laughs> they're Asian too. They're so confused. How come no for us? That's all we saw because she could die. And we were just watching her chew the whole chew time. Chew the whole time. But when we came home, it felt lighter. It felt. Well, like, I bought you okay. know I, one of the kids' shoes. Yeah. We went some shopping. We, you know there was like a little that one guy. There's one guy there in the Tokyo Plaza. Uh-huh. He's you know he's that one man band guy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's sing, you know he has a drum machine and nine keyboards and he's singing in Japanese. I danced. You know. Yeah. I celebrated life that day. May I say something? Yeah. Go ahead. A couple years ago, when there was a woman in need in Seattle, okay, oh yeah, <laughs> um, you didn't spring into action, and I remember you saying, "I'm not going to call. I don't want to be that person who calls 911 oh, yeah. because I don't want to sign papers and do all that." Let me just say that you came through for me so hard. There's a difference between some random white lady I don't fucking know, yeah, all right, and your mom. No, but you know what? Like you could have froze. My, I did my, fry. I did freeze for a second, but not like, honey, the, not like honey. No, I was like, "Where's the phone? Where's the phone?" You know what I mean? But I was you were doing, you were trying, and then when you went, I heard you screaming at the operator. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were my ally in that moment, and I, I honestly, I, I like, don't. I, I'm try, I think you're trying to give me props, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm still a coward. I'm still weak. I don't think you're a coward. All right, at all. but <laughs> and that woman in in Seattle, I'll still be playing Candy Crush. <laughs> Know that. Know that. But I don't know the lady. If he doesn't know you, he's not coming to your rescue. I might. I don't know. But this, if that lady in Seattle would have died, it would have been weird. Yeah. I'd be like, ah. Oh. If your mom would have died, it would have been, it would have been so devastating that it's life altering. She wasn't mm-hmm. gonna die. Not under my watch. I would have kept working and working and working. Yeah. And I even if she had passed out, I still would have. Got done compressions. I would have not stopped. And Mitzi's, but Mitzi's funeral was great. By the way, I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I don't. You, you've heard me talk about Mitzi and whatnot, but um, they finally had her thing Sunday, and um, I I just talked to Natasha Legero and Moshe Kasher like an hour, a couple hours ago. They were there too as well, and they said something that they go that was probably. One of the greatest nights, not that Mitzi had died. I mean, we got to celebrate her death, mm-hmm. but just in terms of like bonding and unity, it was really cool, man. It was like I sat next to Jim Carrey. Whoa. Uh, it was Al Magical, me, Jim Carrey, Kevin Christie, Whitney Cummings, Natasha. Everyone was in our area, and you you got to see all the legends go up and talk about Mitzi. Because I'm from a later generation, so they were telling stories from the 70s and 80s, and um, it was Jimmy Walker, Yakov Smirnoff, Dice, um, Mike Binder. I mean, all these guys, and it was, a fu- it was insane. And I saw some people that I didn't want to see, 
But that was like neutral ground. Mm. You know, that was neutral ground and it was a really cool, you know, it was a mix of like superstars and open micers. And it was a really cool night. And it made me realize that um, at the end of the day, I've had an amazing life. I mean, this the her mom, the thing, it, you know, you, you just kind of reflect and you go, my life is so amazing. And I don't really, you know, s sit there and, 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 and appreciate it because, you know, I have that ism, that thing that wants more and where's mine and fuck that guy and all that stuff. And I don't know if I want to live like that anymore. I, I think that, you know, these two events in one day it just kind of, you know, put a perspective on things, you know, um, that I, at the end of the day, I mean, just this podcast and the way th things are going. And if, even if I didn't have this podcast, I didn't know Kalila, I'd still be in a pretty good place. You know, I mean, this makes it better mm -hmm. and it makes it full. No, I'm just saying, I mean, I <laughs> Why are you making, why, <laughs> if you're I listening, want you Kyle, to be miserable without me. I know I would be miserable <laughs> if I didn't know you and I didn't know you know who you were. Then I wouldn't ha wouldn't. Anything if apparently. now at this point, yeah, it would. I be want miserable. you to be like a poor, imbalanced human being without me. No, <laughs> you know, he's trying to say he's finding happiness. Yeah, you're but right. But guys, right. it's like you know, that's mm -hmm. why you know I didn't call you flat face gook in the beginning. Call me the beautiful. I called you, you know, sterile and uh, pristine. Pristine. <laughs> sterile, like clean. Okay, you can still have babies. Y yeah, you but can like, have babies. Yeah, like I washed think. out. No, 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 just washed. No, washed Wa out. Washed. Clean. Like washed. Completely washed. We're gonna take a moment for our sponsor. A while back on episode thirty-four, <laughs> when Asa Akira was here, we talked about an Asian dating app called East Meet East. Oh yeah, we browsed through profiles and all. Let's see who's new on there, as they now claim to have half a million members. Oh my God, look at these women. Hot. They're so beautiful. That's like a, it's like a K-pop group. It's, a, it's, it's like several pages. Yeah, look at group. beautiful. Oh, wait, there's also hot guys there. I there's hot that. guys in there. They're handsome, too. First. They're like the little Tony Thornburgs in this thing. So many Tony Thornburgs. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. So in celebrating of East Me to East, <laughs> achieving a half a million members, <laughs> they launched a live streaming platform within the app, too. Do you guys know that? So it's a dating app, but you can live stream now. Ooh. They'll be showing six packs and titties? No, dummy, that's oh. fun, but perhaps not here because it's more of a serious dating app. Let's who's live streaming now. Let's look. Oh my God. Oh, whoa. Look, you can send Asian digital gifts like dumplings Yum. and sushi Tasty. and panda That's in addition to trophies and unicorns. Cute. Those look like fun features. And if you're bored, you can scroll through and see pretty girls broadcasting and maybe meet a pretty girl like my princess Kalila. Download the East Meets East app. We put the link in the description <laughs> box. Oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, I, I love it. it. I want to meet all those girls. Yeah. But I can't because I'm in a relationship, but you should if you're a guy. Yeah. <laughs> now, do they have, um, like, not just East Asians, but Southeast it's and South Asians? They got the whole lot. All the flavors. Yeah, it's a whole mix. You can uh, Should this any... fail? Remember, I'm looking for, like, an, an Indian, Indian man. man. You can go on, yeah. Okay, cool. No, you can I'm put in any it. ethnicity. Cool, yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, if this fails, I can just, you know, a lot of things. <laughs> a, lo a lot of options, you know? I know that. And I know that about you. <laughs> okay, so don't fucking threaten me. Nope. If this fails, I'm moving to like a ranch in Oregon and living Oregon. with animals like in an alpaca or something. No, you're not. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. You're going to be knee dip in wet dick. Why <laughs> white though? I can tell. No, I'm. You want to change it up. No, it would probably be an Indian guy or a black guy. And she would have found him. He's oh my east, god, that'd be great. East. Why would it be great? Because I would probably still be in your life. No, if I you, think we broke up, you wouldn't be in my life. Can you I be, say you something? Be if you broke up with me and we were still friends, I'd still be in love with you. And it would uh, hurt me, but I would be like, you know what? That's okay. Like whatever makes him happy. Yeah. You know why? I'm a good person. What about yeah. you, Bobby? 
my face would be so shiny with just pussy juice. <laughs> I would just be dripping like like I, I went into the ocean. Yeah. Did you go go swimming? No, this is pussy juice. Oh. Okay. We just broke up. We just broke up yesterday. Yeah. 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 yeah there's pussy I juice. I took a dive. Mine. I took a took dive, dive. In, in nine pussies. <laughs> uh, yeah. In nine. I'm kidding. Pussies. I'm kidding, babe. Of course. Yeah. I'm kidding, oh, but um, but it can be shiny. So you know, if you're listening right now, you should just appreciate what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and it's so funny because here's another thing, and this and. I don't want to make it. This uh, podcast is already dark and sad. I'm mm -hmm. trying to uplift it to be, you know. But um, like when you see, you know, the Gaza Strip, the Palestinians that died, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And each one of those people have family and people that are devastated that they're gone. Mm -hmm. You don't when you see a news clip or you read it, 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 it it's just a number, right? But it's a real human. And people are just, I just, you know, we should just always put that in our front mind that, yeah. you know, anyone that, a single person that dies, there's a, probably a, a thousand people that are affected. Whose hearts are breaking. Yeah. Like just, yeah. And just that one event to me is like, oh my God, that was so traumatic. Imagine. So, you know, we live in a crazy world and I just, um, I just, I, I feel like I need to do more. I think we can all do better. That's what I got out of it. Yeah. And even it made me realize because I have a very good relationship with my mom. We love each other dearly, but it can be contentious sometimes because she has OCD and I'm not. I'm so the opposite. So she wants certain things a certain way and it like, you know, just grinds my nerves yeah. sometimes. And I snap at her often. And even then I'm like, why do I need? Why can't I just be patient with her? If I know this information about her and she struggles with OCD, why can't I just practice patience? But after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hug her more. I'm going to hold her more. I'm going to watch her breathe because I'm freaked the fuck out, you know? She's not eating rice for a month. No, she's not. I told her, like, as a matter of fact, you can only eat, like, smoothies for like, a whole and month. And another thing that's happening, which is a new thing, uh -huh. is, is that, um, of course, a week ago, Kalila goes, hey, can we foster a puppy? Oh, yeah. You know, because I don't know if you know this, but Kalila's an animal hoarder. Nah, let me just say something. This is a special situation, okay? Okay, let's hear this out. <laughs> let's, let me hear how special this is. There are a few things I'm good at, uh -huh. and one of which is bottle feeding orphaned animals. Yeah, I know. I know how to wake up every two hours. I'm very disciplined about that. When they cry, I'm there. I also spend a lot of time at home. This puppy had been orphaned. Nobody was going to take time out of their day because they have to go into work. I'm here all week. Yeah. You know, so I thought, okay, let me just commit two weeks of my life to bottle feeding an animal and then I return it to the rescue. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I was like, she, I'm like, you're not going to be able to give it up. She's like, I can. I can. I'm going to. I don't know if I can give it up. <laughs> are, you, are you attached to I mean, He's this, way this, more attached this than puppy me. So cute. Yeah. Is, you saw him. Oh, so cute. I mean, it's like storybook, it's like, oh. like the opposite of Remy. <laughs> like Remy is an old pirate, right? <laughs> One he's a eye. piece of shit. He's a angry. piece of angry piece angry. of shit, yeah. right? And I love Remy. Yeah. Okay? Bad breath. This little guy is it's like a showcase animal. <laughs> it's true. Right? Perfect. It's like something that you present at a show. Yeah. Like look at this breed. High quality. Yeah. It's the cutest little thing. I've ever seen in my fucking like cuter than Bojo, I think. Bojo was really cute. Bojo was, was like, cute. Really cute. Yeah, but But if you guys are interested, he's only three weeks old now, but he'll be available for adoption through Mayday Rescue. So um um you can go to their website and fill out an application and do all that. Or if you want to be a foster, it's a great organization to work with. It's M A E D A Y. So what let me ask you this. Let, let me just so now what happens? We I bottle feed for a couple more weeks we bottle feed. And then when I wean him off of the bottle, yeah. then I'm able to hand him back to but who another can let, foster. I'm gonna ask you this. Yeah. Who calls who? This was already pre planned. Before. I understand that, but I'm just saying in two weeks, will they call you? All right, you ready? Oh, I see. No. Or is it something that you call and go, I think we're ready. I think he's... I'm in contact with him every day because I'm obligated to send videos and photographs of his mm. progress. Yeah. So this is a very controlled... Could setting. you do this? Would they allow this? Just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. He's, look at the photos and the videos. He looks great, right? Yeah, great progress. Mm -hmm. Could you go, I'm keeping him. 
Yeah, I could. I could. I could That's adopt him officially. Then. But I'm not going to do that because I want to foster more animals and we're animaled out. Oh, no. What if Bobby says, I want to keep it? If Bobby wants to keep him, yeah. we would have to get a house <laughs> yeah, immediately. I? I know, but would you would you talk me out of it? Yes. Oh. Okay, well then keep that little fucker away from me. Oh, because you're in love. He no, because so I just cute, he, yeah. what he does is um He's cute, yeah. he'll he climbs on your face and he licks your face and he makes these really cute noises <laughs> like that. <laughs> and he looks at you like here's the thing. When an animal looks at you mm. like you're their parent or you know provider and they trust you and they they give you that then what are you going to do you can't go by yeah so for me what i got to do now is just no don't touch the fucking thing again you Damn. can't help it though cuz he has he is cute so eyes so fucking cute this thing yeah like i want to eat it that's how cute it is that's how cute it is like just to put a spear like a little hey, stick it, in cute, the butt a cute little spear that's it a cute one figurative yeah, yeah we'll figure it i'm kidding i'm yeah. not going to eat it guys Mayday Rest is 100% the best. Best organization in town. You're going to get me in trouble. I'm kidding. I'm not going to. No, I just. <laughs> they know I'm a comedian. All right. We're not going to eat the fucking thing. <laughs> they call tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, hey I heard um, your yeah. Asian boyfriend's going to eat the dog. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's cute. So if you guys are interested, I don't know, man. I don't you know. Wait I feel, I'm going to call it. You guys will probably keep it. I've actually. Do you really believe that? I really do. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. And I know how you guys are. Like I, I know you piece you're, of you're, shit. You're smiling at me. You're saying no. You're because just historically, I've never had problems giving away puppies. Well, let's give away Remy. No, Remy, I can't give away because he's a senior and he's he's broken you know vertebrae. yeah he's broken. He has a broken spine. That those are the dogs that are that are not going to be easily adoptable to a lot of people. Those are the ones I want to keep. Uh. But the puppies, they're so e everyone wants a puppy. And those I have no problem giving uh, away. And plus, by the time they start to teethe, and I, I'm not in a phase in my life where I want to deal with eight months of teething. Well, to be we'll honest. give you an update because I don't believe a word she's fucking <laughs> I'm with saying. With Bobby, right now. yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Just you wait. I've given up puppies before. Oh, we'll I bottle fed puppies before. Now let me ask you this, okay? When I today, um, Jim Norton is in town. I did his radio show with Sam Roberts. And Kalila calls me and goes, is it Laurel? Do you hear Laurel? Oh, my gosh. She did the same thing to me. I'm right. Like, so then I – and then Jim looks at me and goes, it's Laurel. Fuck, it's fucking Laurel. Right? I hung up and they did the test for me. Yeah. We should do it right now. Yeah. Everyone. So, so, we know so Okay. So everyone – If you're listening, I'll, yeah. What was the thing on the, inter the internet with the, the dress? Again? Yeah, the, the blue, blue dress. dress the blue day. dress. Yeah. Blue or gold. Everyone yeah. knows the blue gold dress. Thing. I saw both, so mm – -hmm. I only, you know, I, never, I only saw one. But too. in this case, I really wanted to hear both, but I only heard mm -hmm. a, a man's voice saying Laurel. Yeah. I, what, 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 is it, what else did they hear from him? Yanni. 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 I heard that, a variation of that. I heard Yammy. Yeah, which is what Jessica heard. She hears Yammy too. Yammy. She does? Yeah. I hear Yammy, not Yanni. There's Yammy. some, a small percentage of people that hear Yammy instead of Yanni. Like, but it's it, Laurel. How the fuck did they listen okay, to fuck? You're like, hearing Laurel? Let, let the audience decide. Let's hear it. Yeah, put your comment after you hear this. Laurel. Oh, it's... Wait, that's Laurel. I heard Laurel. Yeah. Laurel. That's Me Laurel. too. It's Laurel. It's Laurel. Laurel. Out there? I heard Yammy. Jules? It's di what that, do you hear? Laurel. That's, that's what it's wait, saying. Wait, play the right Juliana. one Juliana. Can you come in here real quick <gasps> wait, and tell play it me? Again? Without the headset. Play it again. Okay, hang on. Okay. It sounds different. Laurel. It sounds Laurel with the headset for me. Yeah. I take it off. It says Yammy. Laurel. What do you hear? Laurel. I hear Laurel. Laurel. Yeah. Yammy? Hey, come here. Put the headset on really quick. Come here. Laurel. Watch this. You hear Yammy? Laurel. <laughs> Put this on. Laurel. What do you hear? It might Laurel. be the same for me. Laurel. 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 Still? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put my headset on. All I hear on. is Laurel now. Here, put this, this, put this on. All I hear is Laurel. <laughs> you really hear Yami? Here. Put oh my God. Yeah. Really? Jules? She's one of those. Yeah. Get out of my house. You're a yeah. witch. Go. Uh, You're so uh, scared. Yeah, yeah. Eat something. God. <laughs> it's the Laurel. It's the Laurel. It's Laurel. Yeah. There, I, 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 I did not hear Laurel until yeah. I, now. All I hear is Laurel. Laurel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's well, Laurel. I wonder what that. I wonder. That's crazy. That's so weird. Right. Now, it, now you're a scientist. Tell me what it is. 
So the explanation is that it's more of a mechanical thing of our ears being able to pick up on different frequencies. So if that that audio actually has both a high pitched yanny or yanny, I think I don't know, I've never heard it, heard and a low uh, male voice saying Laurel. Yeah. Some people can hear both frequencies of sound. I've heard both Some now. people can only hear like a lower register. Some people can only hear a certain one, but it's the free. So it goes what, to show. Wait, do dumb people listen hear? L- Laurel then? I don't think. I think like because they used to first they were saying oh only old people hear Laurel but it's like there were young kids who heard Laurel and older people who heard Yanni so. I heard That's Yanni. That's so yeah. I want to hear Yanni so bad. Me so too. Weird. So weird. I keep I heard, trying. I've heard both now. It's so, so weird. So you can hear both. But what happened then? Because I need I, for a second, I could only hear Yami. As soon as I put this on, I yeah. heard Laurel. I think that some people can hear a different one if it's further away from them. Oh. So I don't. I don't know. I I can't hear. Uh, yeah, I've I'm never. On, yeah. yeah. Or there's a shit. And nobody I was with, <laughs> nobody I was with, Jim or Sam heard Yanni. Interesting. That's an interesting thing. Yeah. But doesn't that go to show you that, like we were just talking about last week, about how. What we see or what we hear, what we perceive is not as accurate as you might think. That two people can hear two separate things, you know? Yeah. Um, so, oh, speaking of last week with Jamie Kennedy's episode. Yeah. Great episode. Fucking freak me the hell out. So, um, you know, the day after the episode release, I was getting a bunch of tweets mm-hmm. saying that when I was saying the phrase that our reality is it's just a hallucination, hallucination. Yeah. my voice distorted and I sounded it, like a qu- like a demon went, for it. Like so it was like a remix. When I, edit, I listened to the whole podcast, yeah. uh, unedited, fine. And then as soon as I export it and I send it off, apparently it, something happened in there. And then it goes, your reality is a ha- <laughs> I know, it was remixed. hallucination. <laughs> We're like, what? What? <laughs> it freaked me the hell out, baby. It is the shift. Is it you? I'm a believer. Are you real? Am I not real? Am I a droid? That'd be crazy if this whole time you were an android. Or oh, wait, hold on. What do they call it in Battlestar Galactica? A si- not a Cylon, a seed, um, sleep sleeper cell. What do you call those? What do you mean? You oh, know how if like... you're a sleeper cell. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know that know they're... A um, sleeper cell. It yeah. is a sleeper cell, Winter right? So- Winter yeah. soldier. Damn. What if I'm a sleeper cell? But mm. what is your goal? To kill you. Oh, Whoa. shit. What if that happened? What if I was conditioned to kill Gilbert and I just did it? I wonder what the word is. What? For you to kill me. I don't know, like antler. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Bobby says antler, pulls a gun. Uh, what yeah, the hell's yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah. I feel antler. like it would be something like okra or something like you don't hear daily. Right. You know? Mama, Mama Musha. Yeah. Ooh, that's a pretty cool one. Yeah. If somebody said Mama Musha. You just yeah. see a Russian guy walk up to Bobby Lee, Mama Musha. Mamushka. Like the but then you, family. But what happens though, if you're a sleeper cell and the key word happens, do, then you realize, oh my God, I'm an assassin. Mm-hmm. And then do you... Oh, you're self-aware? Yeah. Are you self-aware? Are you like, an, oh yeah. I think it's like... I'm an assassin or you just do it. I think you just do it, but I don't know how you turn it off. Hey. What? Congrats on the pickup. We haven't oh, even yeah. talked about that. What pick up? Everybody, a round of applause. Season, Season two. two. Splitting oh, it together, my everybody. God. Give it up. Oh. For the Slap King, everybody. Oh, God. Listen. Listen to me. So excited. Okay. Are you? Yeah, dude. Wait, when wait. I saw that post, I was like, I never posted any of your pictures. I was like, this is a big day. This is huge. You know, it's, 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 it was one of those things where I knew it was coming because uh, the numbers are good. Yeah. You know, in my head, I'm like, you know, we're beating everyone in our time slot. They were slipping through through the weeks, but still, we were still holding, and you know, and and the talk amongst the actors and stuff were like, yeah, we're probably gonna get picked up. So when we did, it was a joyous o- occasion, but um, I, you know, I'm not on it a lot. It's you like, are. It's like no, no, people say that though. They go, how, how come that you're not on it? Oh. Like last week's episode, I wasn't oh. on it, right? And so maybe uh, you know, and I, you know, I hopefully they'll use me more. But other than that, um, I'm, I, you know, I don't know, you know, because I'll tell you why. If you were on a sitcom in the '70s and '80s, you would, ha- and 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 it was a success. Mm-hmm. You would immediately feel it in your life, like just financially. I mean, not in just that. It's like you know, there was three channels back then. Oh yeah. Right. You you know instead of three or four million people watching, 
you had like 30 million mm -hmm. watching and you would walk down the street and people would be like, oh yeah, right? I Not, not one person has said, I like you on Splitting Up Together. <laughs> not a single person. Really? And I've been in Denver since then, Vancouver, I've been in uh, Texas, I've been all over. Not one person. I, I think that there's just um, a disconnect right? yeah. though between um, network TV watchers and the stand-up scene. I think that podcast listeners are more inclined. Maybe I don't, I don't, I don't just go stuff. into a comedy club. I go to restaurants. I go to grocery store. I go to Walmart, Walgreens. I'll do all that shit. I'll do all the walls. I'll do all the, the walls. walls. Yeah. <laughs> and no one's ever said anything. I walked down the street. Mm -hmm. Is this still Mad TV? I, I don't know. I get like Love. Tiger Belly the most. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude, I was in Cal. Not Cal yeah, I was in Calgary last Gosh, weekend. Yes, yeah. And the sun. The last show I did, Saturday Night Second Show, was the toughest one. It was packed. Mm. And the comics were getting off stage and they're like, God, they were tough. And I go, do you know why? I go, these are the Tiger Belly fans. Mm. And as soon as I got up there, ah, you know what I mean? But like, this podcast is reaching things that I couldn't believe. So Wait, tell us a story about the, the dad and the son, the Irish man. Dad and the son. In Calgary. Uh, oh my God, I mean. What? I'm on stage and I talk about, you know the bit I do about going to a brothel in Thailand? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a woman's eating my butthole mm -hmm. <laughs> and all that. And I do the bit <laughs> and it's, it crushes. And from the back of the room, I see this little leprechaun stand up. He's wearing green. Oh, he's, he's an 80 year old Irish man. I, I can't do an accent. Was he really wearing green? Yeah, he was. He was wearing, was he wearing a top hat. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> it could be one of those thing, th things like, you know. You, you I self-corrected. Well, yeah, I perceived, yeah. yeah. He had a pot of gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a Conor McGregor t-shirt on. Conor McGregor t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, you think that's funny? <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. And I go, yeah, they laugh. Well, that's not funny. Oh, right? challenged you. And I go, well, they fucking laugh, right? And people are laughing at this point still. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I go, um, so then, I, I don't know if you guys see my act, but I do a lap dance thing at the end. Oh. And I picked his nephew. <laughs> yes. Who was like, yes. who was like 22 year old kid. Yeah. Right? And I go, I want to show you funny. <laughs> did he volunteer or you just of said, course, I want. Yeah, he, he did volunteer, to volunteer, but there was a lot of people that volunteered. Yeah. And I honed right in on him. <laughs> the leprechaun thing. And I go, leprechaun, look, right? <laughs> look. And I went so sexual. And I could see him get up and walk out of the room. <laughs> and I, I didn't go out and greet anybody that show because I don't want, I don't, I've never fought a leprechaun before. You know? Oh my gosh. It was crazy. He got up and walked away. I wonder. Gobi, can you freaking stop? Gobi, bro? stop, Gobi. Come here, Gobi. God, Gobi. But you what? Oh, we have we have a sponsor, Lisa. L e e s a Lisa, the best mattress in the whole wide world. Guys, oh my God, I love this mattress, Lisa. It's um Tempur Pedic, and if you want to spring into better sleep, I I think you should get it. Listen. Yeah. Pop and I got some aches and pains on our body, yeah. and the way the Lisa just cradles those joints yeah. those crevices Pains. yeah yeah it's like it's like it's like Sleeping an angel oh. holding your pain for you oh wow mm -hmm. you know when you do go to a makeup place and they sometimes have to put castings on your face right mm -hmm. to make a perfect you know that's it's like the foam memory foam is around your body and you're being cast in the perfect mattress made specifically for you mm -hmm. oh, wow tell them about it Guys, also, one mattress donated for every 10 sold and one tree planted for every dollar received. 23,000 mattresses donated thus far. So you're saving the world, basically. I care about that. So, Lisa Mattress is loved by 300,000 you know, people, happy sleepers and counting. Hey, us included. So $125 off at lisa.com slash belly. $125 off at lisa.com slash belly. It's the biggest discount we've ever offered. Lisa, L-E-S-A, the greatest mattress in the world. I love that mattress. Those mattresses is the greatest, the Lisa's. So, so soft. So check it out. When I was flying here from Calgary. Yeah, bro. So I didn't know what to watch. So I downloaded a Takashi Miike movie. If you don't know Takashi Miike, 
He did some of my favorite movies, Ichi the Killer, Audition. He's basically the Japanese um, Quentin Tarantino. He's done like a bunch, like 60 movies. This guy's a beast. Wasn't he the same guy who um, did that movie with a sex in the greenhouse? Yeah, Visitor Q. Mm-hmm. Um, which, if you haven't seen Visitor Q, it's unwatchable almost, but <laughs> it is because you don't know what's going on in it, but there's a scene in it where there's a man who makes love to um, a corpse. <laughs> yeah. It's, nice. it's the funniest scene you've ever seen. He's making love yeah. to a corpse. And he's basically saying in Japanese, like, oh, my God, the miracle of life. You know, even in death, women get wet. Mm. Right? So he starts having sex with her more. Okay. And then he pulls his hand up, and it's her shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he shows the shit in camera. It's really great. great. One of the great uh, cinematic masterpieces. So what's his new movie, the title? Blade of the Immortal. And it's basically based on an anime, and it's about a samurai. And in the beginning of the movie, he fights like 300 other samurai. Oh, wow. And he kills all of them, right? But by the end, you know, his hand's chopped off. You know, he's bludgeoned. And he's got like 50, like, you know what I mean, stab wounds. Yeah. He's about to die. But he kills the last guy. And he falls to his death. And then this witch appears out of nowhere. And, she, and he goes, kill me, kill me. And she goes, I'm not going to kill you. And she opens up his <laughs> chest. And she puts blood worms inside him. Leeches? No, there's these little worms. <laughs> They're called blood worms. Okay. And they go inside him, and then they heal all his wounds and stuff, so he can't ever die. Oh. So that's why I play the immortal. Do. That's what leeches. Yeah, and it's like um. He's like Wolverine or Deadpool. Yeah, but it's not. He, he still feels a lot of pain, but he can't die. Like this is a scene where he fights another guy that's um immortal too, who has blood worms, mm -hmm. and they're killing each other. And like at one point. <laughs> It just cuts to like them fighting, and then it cuts to a scene where one's on top of the other one, but one of them has like a hundred store swords sticking out of his body. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. This movie. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why are you laughing? It is really funny. No, it's a, that scene's funny. I laughed out loud in the plane. Yeah. Right? And then another scene where he um he try he drinks a lot of sake because he wants to get his bloodworms drunk. Drunk. Yeah, because because he says like they they like to party. <laughs> he tells this girl that, and then they like they heal his wounds faster or whatever. But it's a really, really weird movie, and I think what if you watch what it. if you were sleeping and then you had one eye open and you saw Kalila just putting worms in your mouth, blood, blood worms. worms. Yeah. Well, you had, she'd have to open up a wound because they're blood worms. They're, they they go in your blood. Okay, yeah. so she's cutting your belly. <laughs> well, as soon as she <laughs> cuts cut my your... belly, I'm out. Hey, bitch. <laughs> bitch, what are you <laughs> calling my be belly for? And too late, blood worms. You know, but um, if. You know, I somehow I had blood worms in my body. I I would be a vigilante. Oh, the super. And I would around. like, yeah, yeah, I would like. I don't have any samurai skills, so it like it's basically he doesn't have he's not stronger for having blood worms. So basically, I would have to fight people with my own power, like my own strength. <laughs> and it, like if it's George, and it would take me probably forever. But he wouldn't be able to kill me, and eventually I would kill him. So just out of like sheer stamina and being able to regenerate. Yeah, and I'd be like, and also another thing is, is that I wear I'd wear an outfit, but I have to work out because if I don't like wear an outfit, yeah, if I wear an outfit, the people will be able to recognize my body <laughs> <laughs> because I have like you know I me mean, a weird shaped body, and people will be like, oh no, that's you know instead it's of going who did it, they'd say that's that's Mochi the Nugget. <laughs> That's Bobby Lee. No, Mochi the Nugget. That's my name. Mochi the Nugget. Yeah. See how that played? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that they actually <laughs> use... See how that played? Yeah. Yeah. Mochi the Nugget. Mochi or Moshi? Moshi the Nugget. Moshi the Nugget. Um, do you know that they actually use like maggots in the hospitals and stuff to heal wounds? Yeah, in your land. No. We don't do that in See, okay, you guys. We don't do that at fucking Cedar Sinai. You guys didn't believe me when I said that they actually have like poop pills to like repopulate your gut biome and your gut bacteria. Yeah, but they're not stuff. really poop pills. There's like they're elements. They're poop, poop pills. Pill they're straight up poop pills. <laughs> oh, hey, well, don't ever don't yell poop pills at me like that again. That, I've never seen that. Well, yeah, they yeah. use maggots to eat away all like the dead skin and stuff. If something is like, let's say, for instance, like. You know, gangrenous or something like that. Yeah. It eats away at the dead skin. They yeah, use but what maggots. do like what do like civilized um, white people do? They, they use this in hospitals. They use poop pills there too. As yeah, well. George, they do. Poop pills? Oh, 
all the time, all the Dude, time. You in, know, maggots and pill, poop pills. It's insects a- are crucial to any type of like even even for like forensic entomology to figure out oh. when a body how long a body has been dead based on the maggots like life um s- the stage at which it has grown yeah let's say for instance if they look inside your body your corpse and let they they inspect the maggot and they say hey this maggot is only four days old they'll be able to determine how long your body has been deceased Exactly to the hour. I have a question for you. Yeah. I always thought this, like, when I saw, like, Gilligan's Islands as a kid. Yeah. I always thought, like, you know, what would I do if I was... It could, And I thought, could you eat your own poop? And if you did eat <laughs> your own poop, a couple of days, what comes out of you? More poop? More poop or darker or something. Poop, yeah. yeah, what kind of poop comes out? I mean, no, they're not making people fucking eat, like, a parfait of their own shit. No, I'm just saying I'm if I was survive, Yeah, I'm curious. If no, I was... you, it's tough. Like you would die because other things like E. coli are coming out of your butt. What well, it came from within me? What happened? Yeah, but you also have things that are pathogenic e- even in your gut. We don't know that. I don't know that. I'm sorry. Then I won't eat my own poo. Even in your, <laughs> <laughs> even in your nose, you can be a carrier for many different things. So I shouldn't eat my boogers. Um, no, you, well, actually, no. Um, I think that eating your boogers are fine because your stomach acids are just going to destroy that shit. It's salty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, what, so if you, because I know an Australian guy who would drink pee. For yeah, nutrients. but pee, eventually you would have a buildup of ammonia in your system and that would eventually probably be toxic to you uh-huh. and it would affect your brain somehow. Okay. But the likelihood of getting sick from one time drinking your pee is not as severe as eating your own shit. Uh, like, don't have a fucking, like, banana What about this? Stiletto. What if, if I was a surgeon? I've, I think I heard this before where a surgeon was, you know, deserted on an island mm-hmm. and he had a surgery stuff and he would peel parts of his skin, uh, like, meat off his body. Eat to himself? eat it? Yeah. To survive. Wow. So I eventually that, he was just a nub man. Like, okay, that's what I would do. I would shoot up, I'd shoot myself up with morphine. Yeah. I would probably, if I could probably and coherently dress my own wound and make sure there was no infection. Yeah. I, I would do that. But what he does is he's opening himself up for sepsis and inf- eventually having that wound become infected. But mm. if he has everything to make sure it doesn't get infected, yeah. then yeah, I guess theoretically that would make sense. Oh, I see. So we had antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but still, let's say you're in a very humid area. You're not. You can't keep clean. You're not. You don't have access to water. You know, How cartoony you... islands you would see in cartoons where it's just a mound of land and palm one tree. palm tree. Yeah. One palm tree, yeah, yeah. and there's a man laying against that. Yeah. In a situation like that, you're probably dead then, for sure. Yeah, and unless you're me and you can like spear fish and stuff. The cartoons don't have. Yeah, fish. but if you know, but it, but in in a small little island, like just literally an island the size of the room, this room, yeah. for instance. Yeah. And you have a tree in the middle of this room. You're fucked, because you, especially when you don't have access to water, you can't drink ocean water. Mm. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. Or you could do this if it's rainy. You can drink the leaves off the water, like use the Ooh. leaves as a receptacle, receptacle to capture the water. Yeah. yeah. If you let's if it is a rainy island. But if it's like fucking like, you know, if that's assuming that you're in a very, you know, precipitous environment. Yeah. Okay. Just FYI, I just want to know. <laughs> he was, it, I'm yeah. also. I also did poop. see one time that there a man. I don't know who it was. There is a way to separate the salt from seawater. I think it's just a little bit harder, so you're not going to ingest all that. Like, ooh, ooh I got a question. Calm. Yeah. You want to eat your own cum? Yeah, pro- I think that's only nine calories. At is there most. a protein? There's got to be protein. There's there no is. guy swimming in there. But I think it's only nine calories. How is that going to fucking? Is that be cannibalism? Up? Are you eating your own nut? Yeah. You're eating your own child? No. Okay. You do that now. I know. You smell and taste it every time. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so you guys want a question? Yeah. Let's get a question going. All right. I'll have a Cajun fried rice. Hi, I hope you guys are doing good. Big fan of the podcast. I'm a 24-year-old male from the UK. Until recently, I had been working behind Hello? the bar in a local pub. My friend's dad, who must be about 70, would drink in there pretty regularly about three times a week. I'd met him a handful of times over the past five years or so, and his son is one of my best friends. He is old and a very devout Catholic who currently works in the church and, to my knowledge, always has. I've got a bit of a weird vibe from him, and he started to seem even weirder 
after he recognized me in the pub. He started off by giving me big tips of five euros and 10 euros and holding my hand for like 10 seconds when he gave them to me. And he just would stare into my eyes saying all these weird complimentary stuff about me. At the risk of sounding like a dick, I'm a fairly attractive guy. Gross. And I've got a quite of a lot of attention. Gross. I also have a, I look quite young. Yuck. Than the, the way I look, and I could easily pass for 18. Yeah, me too, dude. Especially and I'm 47. Come after on. I shave. After a few months of generous tips from him and weird encounters with him, one day he had about five large glasses of red wine and got pretty drunk. As I was walking around the what? pub collecting glasses, he called me over to him and he pulled me to one side. He said, now, Liam, I've got a proposition for you. Well, first off, I just want to make it clear I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm not gay at all, man. But what I do have is an appreciation for the male form. I used to have a boy who I would pay 150 euro a week to allow me to look at his naked body for two or three hours during the week. I wouldn't touch him. Or force him to do anything. He would simply get undressed and I would appreciate his body from a distance. Oh my <laughs> God. Does this sound like something you'd be interested in? I immediately said no, but I wasn't a dick about it. I kind of laughed it off and was like, sorry, I'm not interested. I was actually kind of flattered. Uh, fast forward, I realize I'm 24, but honestly, I could probably pass for 18 and maybe even younger. I've got no beard. I'm skinny and okay, just all generally right, all right, all right, all right, get all right, to the question. Got it, we got it, we got it. Boyish looking. All right, all right, all right. Definitely more of a boy than a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. I'm basically as close as you can get without doing something illegal. Anyway, so my question to you is: Should I bring it up with my friend? What should I do? It would be the most awkward fucking thing to say to one of my best friends. Your dad wants to pay me to get naked in front of him, so my gut instinct is to just never mention it to anyone. But a second opinion, a second opinion would be great. My question is, he's like, I'm going to watch you from a distance. Like, how far of a distance are we talking? Like, I don't know. Like a fucking football field <laughs> I don't away? Know, 100 yards, maybe? Babe, we need your opinion. <laughs> uh, what does he do? Does, she t does he tell the friend about the dad? No, you can't tell your friend. Yeah. What I would do is, how much is he charging? 150 uh, euros, which is $203. Okay, I would do, I would go, listen, mate. Hello. Talk back, yeah. Okay. Hello, mate. Yeah. I like to, um, I would like to um, consider your proposition. All right, 150 euros. Now, 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 listen, I have some adjustments. Okay. I'd like a thousand euro. Hear me out. All right. And then I'll put the line between you and me. Okay. I'll put a line so you can't cross the line mm -hmm. and 800 yards away. 800 <laughs> yards away? You know that's a whole, that's eight football fields. Well, what's uh, one football field? A hundred yards. A hundred yards away. Okay. My bad. My, my bad. <laughs> my, my bad. My bad. A hundred yards away, yeah. I will dance around naked. I'll give you binoculars. You can jerk off if you want to. I didn't never say anything about You can jerk off. off if you want to. I don't to. want to. Well, yeah, I'm giving you the option. <laughs> Thank you for the option. Cheers. Cheers. And, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And, um, yeah. Okay. Um. I appreciate the mail form, so let's do it. All right. And then we do it. Yeah. Easy. A thousand pounds every time. You can jerk off. I didn't say that. I, hello. <laughs> Stop hello, saying hello. I don't want I don't want to uh, jerk off. Guess what? Yes. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> and I would just that. But if not that, no. Don't tell the friend, yeah. Yeah, what do you how do you open that up? Yeah, it's, I'm it's, the guy. I'm the friend. You're the guy. S S Simeon. S Simeon? That, yeah, that's your new. That's Charlie, you've never called me Simeon before. It doesn't matter. You look like Simeon to me. Hey. Did you want to talk to me? I guess so. What's up? Your father has been coming into the bar lately. My masculine father, who likes devout to fuck, Catholic, who likes to fuck the shit of my my of my mother. Thank you for telling me that. Anyway, Liam, it was weird, but Simeon, <laughs> stop calling me Simeon. You know my name is Ricky. <laughs> God. Um. So your dad has been giving me weird vibes lately. Oh, that's and, interesting. Um, he proposed this thing where he wanted to pay me and he wanted to appreciate my body. From a... Why'd you stab me? See, there, that's it. You'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That is pretty English. Yeah. They would do some shit like that. You talk about my father like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You want to talk about my father sucking your dick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be dead. <laughs> See, yeah. 
That is true. They'd probably go down like yeah. that. I wouldn't say a thing. It's not like the dad did anything illegal. Like he didn't fucking, you know, grab your dick or anything. He just asked it's nicely. Gay, gay. It's gay, gay. Yeah, <laughs> but he's a fucking Catholic. Like that pressure of like not being able uh, to live your true self. I know. Is... This in this society, can we just be who we are? Yeah. yeah. If you're gay, gay, be gay, gay. Be gay, you know, gay. If you're American Indian, be American Indian. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just be that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Anyway, so the next question is, <laughs> hey, Tiger Belly, so I'm a 22-year-old Native American from Canada, uh, Canada, currently pursuing my dream of becoming a professional fighter, either MMA or kickboxing or even boxing. My question is that I started fighting at 20 years old, and I currently have a six fights under my belt in Muay Thai and kickboxing. I feel as if I'm not going anywhere with it, but I just wanted to know if I should give up and pursue something else. I have a 4-2 in record. I currently lost in a Canadian national bout. I'm still near the bottom of the totem pole and working my way up. I feel the pressure of these younger athletes who are still in their teens as they're winning against me. So overall, should I keep going or give up? I love the fight game, but my dream is to make it pro while I'm still in my 20s. I would appreciate it if you guys helped me out. Love you guys. Whatever you do in life, um, you should go into every match and just win. Losing shouldn't be an option. Um, you know, guys like Conor McGregor, does he... Is, does he have the skill? Is he better than everyone else? Or is it a mental game? I think it's a mental, mental game. I think it's a mental game. I think that he doesn't have an option. He has to win. And he's going to do everything he can, you know. And if you put 100% into every fight and just go in there to die. Oh, my God. No, I mean, just risk your life. I am going to okay. cut. I am not gonna leave this unless he kills me. Mm -mm. No, I'm no, I'm I'm not saying literally. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't want him to die literally. Yeah. yeah. But for me, it's like, I mean, if I'm doing like when I did Jay Leno when I was a kid. Yeah. I just in my head, I'm like, I can't fail. I have to kill it. There's no option. Mm -hmm. Mm. You have to have that mentality, because people have gone. Oh, I don't know this on it, and then they. You, you can't. I can only speak from my experience as a swimmer because it is a very individual sport like MMA. And I will tell you that all the races that I ever swam, when I was turning my head and looking at my competitors to the left, their competitors to the right, are, are races that I never won or set a good time in. Mm -hmm. It was always the races where I kept my head forward and swam my own race in my own way that I always broke my own record or broke some record. So I say, fuck the young ones, fuck the old ones. If you love this sport and you want, this is something that takes, that you want to continue doing mm -hmm. every day, day in and day out, that you shouldn't live in the results. You shouldn't live in, you shouldn't even bother looking at who's, who you should beat, who you shouldn't beat. You should just do it your own way and keep pushing. That's what I wanted to say, really, at the end of the day. I agree with you, too. Just put blinders on. I also agree with you. Don't live in the results, okay? But it's a mental game, and you can be the greatest fighter ever to be in the octagon as well, if you believe it. Mm -hmm. I want this guy to be a champion. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying, right? I don't want him to be like Eric Koch. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Coke, he doesn't mean that. I don't mean that. Eric Coke is a really He's good He's very fighter. talented as well. He did lose the last two fights. Bobby Green? Mm -hmm. But Bobby that was Green. a really close and fight. And Clay Guida. Though. Big names. Yeah, but B those big are names. all close I, I, fights. I, well, I'm only saying that to antagonize him. <laughs> did you do something to you recently? Yeah, so I want him to be a champion as well. Oh. Okay. He's still so young. Oh, yeah, and that's a perfect example. You're 24. Eric Coke is what, 28, 29? Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's gonna keep pushing, mm -hmm. you know. And he's had some losses. Where am I gonna be anywhere soon? Um, yeah, you shows. are. Bobby is going to be in um, Seattle or Bellevue. When? Um, the first week of um, June, and the week after that, you're gonna be at San Francisco Punchline. Oh my God! And do you have any other announcements for the Slep Kingdom? Uh, no. New merch soon. New merch, New merch soon. New merch coming soon. Um, also, just to clarify for some people, we will not be at Vulture Fest. Oh yeah, can you tell me what happened with that, I don't Bobby? Know exactly. no. You're the one. But no, me. I'm telling them though. I'm letting them know just so they. Oh yeah, yeah, not, yeah. We're not. Yeah, we can discuss after. We can discuss after. <laughs> but uh, no Vulture Fest in New York, possibly L.A. We'll keep you guys updated. Um, 
George, any uh, things we need to uh, wrap up? Uh, just all the thank you, everybody who gave us uh, five star reviews on Ooh, iTunes. I'll we take got one a, of those. Yeah, uh, you got one on the back of the other thing. Uh, okay. Uh, shout out to TJ Benedict, uh, and a shout out to Splitting Up Together from him. Uh, Sunny Squ- Sunny Square uh, gave us the Ustedes Tamarindo uh, as a variation of Nosotros Papaya. But that's oh, actually here. like. Oh, tamarind. Tamarindo. Yeah. Oh, here's one. You want to read this one? Here. The bottom one. Okay. It's a little longer. I'm a 37-year-old Midwestern single mom. Oh, this is from Leslie Galerna. Galema. Galema. I'm a 37-year-old Midwestern single mom who had never heard of Bobby Lee until about a year ago when I watched Love on Netflix. As I Ooh. was watching Splitting Up Together. Oh, there you go, babe. As I was watching, <laughs> someone compliments him about splitting up together. As I was watching Splitting Up Together, I recognized Bobby and also felt his depiction of his character was endearing. So I googled him. I had no idea he was a comic. I watched videos of him with news anchors and was so impressed with his energy and sense of humor. Then I discovered this podcast and have not stopped listening in over a week. Oh my wow! I work from home and most days feel a sense of loneliness that I miss in a typical work environment. Bobby, Kalila, George, and Gilbert are my new best buddies. It is refreshing how authentic and open they are with their lives in Hollywood and a great escape from the mundane reality of Indiana and the soccer mom mm-hmm. life. Tiger Belly, watch out. I believe with this new hit TV show, see babe? Um, you will see <laughs> that your audience song. grows and He's a wide spot, variety yeah. of women like me will start following. And Bobby, if you read this, I was compelled by your first by your acting first to find mm. out more about you. You don't need to worry about being good enough. You already are. Aww. And we are all cheering for you. Warning, don't listen around your kids. That was from Leslie Galema. Thank Leslie. you. Leslie, that was so Thank good. you, Leslie, that was nice. That's so sweet. Yeah. That's sweet as can come. You're the best mommy ever. Thank you. Uh, you don't need to leave those longer reviews. Thank you. Uh, you know, but, but that would, we appreciate them. Yeah. Or some other reviews. But that's personal, I like that. Uh, this reviews. is from Bonerific. George is a modern day Bab- Baba Booey. Bobby is an Asian Howard Stern. Gilbert is Fred. And Kal- uh, Khalifa is Robin. <laughs> my point is this fantasy is an illusion. Keep up the great work, and I'll keep listening with my kimchi ice cocktail. Can I just point something out that's really bothering me? So you've handed us this piece of paper mm-hmm. with reviews, but you've underlined. You've underlined the sentences where they're giving you praise, George. <laughs> yeah. Okay, George. You've highlighted the, highlighted the one. Shout out to Leland from Utah. Hey, you know if you, you know, want to, you're about fired. <laughs> you're fucking gross. Um, we're not even gonna read that. All right, let's go. Bye. Uh, uh, so guys, make sure um, you go for a five dollar <laughs> trial month. Uh, for hymns.com slash belly, and if you want to meet very pretty girls, download East Meet East. Uh, to spring into a better sleep with our favorite mattress, lisa.com slash belly. Uh, any other announcements? Take this time to do reverse shout outs, shout outs, anything else you guys want. Read out underlined compliments to yourself from a sheet because that's normal. I know, George. What the fuck? Gross. Well, I gave you that one to read, you know. Uh... <laughs> that was the best part. Of <laughs> George is so handsome. Uh, thank you, Ezra. Okay, I'll read it for you. Give me the fucking paper, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, I'm I'm need, I need to do this I'm now. Done. I need to. I'm done. He's getting nervous now. He's trying to I need to read the highlighted, the, yeah. the things that George has just highlighted. Say, just for say me. the highlighted stuff. I want to see it. I've come to the conclusion that this is what's highlighted that George Kimmel is the greatest podcaster Ooh, of that all guy's time. Smart. Thank you, Mr. Kimmel. Oh, it says Yuck. Bryce Halleck. Okay, that's his cousin. Jesus Christ. That's hilarious. You're fired. <laughs> oh, I like that I was called his wife. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any shout outs? Reverse shout outs. Uh, shout out to Mayday um, again. Is that what it's yes. called? Yes. Um, shout out to Mayday Rescue. I foster oh, yeah. for them. If you love animals and you'd like to um, help with fostering an animal and finding them a good home, they're a really good organization mm-hmm. to work with. Their Instagram handle is Mayday. That's M A E D A Y rescue that's it okay. <laughs> i was you, like wait a why second why did you inflect up like i was like is there a dot com at the end rescue no. i know that's it uh and then like kalala said we do have new merch coming out uh so just to remind everyone like the way we do it here is always a new um new merch product so it won't be any repeats but we may have a repeat on this one <laughs> maybe <laughs> don't know why i said that but if we have a repeat, repeat. 
This will be the there, first and only repeat, repeat, so you gotta get your hands on it quickly. Yes. Um, uh, they sold out in 10 minutes the last, last time. Last time, and this time it might be seven minutes, so. So yeah, and we are going to actually be very good about um, the time that it's released. We'll be honest this time. It wasn't that we're not honest. We were surprised, yeah. N- no, because the last, what happened the last time is every time that we've ever released merch, we've always, we've had it, the first time we released it, we had a problem. And the, when the site went live, mm-hmm. there were there issues. were issues with the site, so we took it down. And people were like, where did the site go, blah, blah, blah. So now what we did was just to err on the safe side, we went live a few hours we wanted to have a soft ahead launch to, to make sure problems, that, yeah, yeah, a soft launch to make sure that things were running mm-hmm. correctly. But people caught on to this, <laughs> and now they were logging into the website or a few way, hours way early. Posting it online, telling people. And then telling other people. And I think what happened was people found out on Reddit and so by the time we went live, most things were gone, which is totally our mistake. Yeah. I think that when we have a time set, we should stick to that time from here on out. But if you want to get new merch, follow us on Reddit or on the join the Facebook group. So, you know, it's a, there's some good advice here regardless. A good a good point, you and, know, a great moral here. And uh definitely also follow us on Instagram because that's <laughs> definitely when we typically will announce it. It'll, you'll probably see it on Instagram before this audio. So, make sure you uh follow us there. Um. Anything else? Oh, really quick. Did you watch the fights? I did. I only watched MMA the, Minute with Kalila Khan. I only watched the Calvin Gastelum, Jacare, okay. and then the Amanda Nunes and Cooper. um Raquel oh, Pennington. Raquel Pennington. Oh, I did watch the Cooper and um Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern came in heavy. heavy. They probably like yeah. Were Were people pissed about that? Oh, they were very pissed, but like. Yeah, she she's gonna get a dietitian. She, she tried to do it on her own. Wait, hold on, but she didn't take the fight on short notice or anything like she that. Did not, she just did not time it out right. Yeah, uh, because she is a thicker girl. Thicker, and they uh, she's had problems in the past, uh, and then the commission stopped her. They're like, you're she passed. She almost passed out like three days out mm-hmm. trying to cut. So mm-hmm. like, poor girl. That's it. Yeah, but I mean, there's a 125 division, you know. Jump on that. Yeah, she's uh, very good though. What did you think about? Uh, I guess just um. The controversy with Between Raquel Pennington, Raquel Pennington, and uh, Amanda, um, her corner. Yeah, I don't know where I stand on that. Raquel Pennington, after the fourth round, was like, "I'm done." Oh yeah, she yeah. said, "I'm done. I can't." Yeah. I don't so want there was, um, but I guess her um, corner either ma- like we're, they were basically managed, like pushed through. Yeah, like fight through, you. fight through. I don't know where I stand on that because I'm not a fighter. I've never yeah. been injured in that way. But if my nose is fucking smashed into my brain and I say I'm done. Just protect my face a little bit. But yeah. also, like... I get it, though. Because they know her best. She knows They have a relationship that other people don't know. Yeah, the and I'm sure she stands fire. by it. But she did. Uh, she publicly says she did. Yeah, I'd be a horrible corner man for... Corner woman for somebody that I cared about. Because they would have, like, a gash over their <laughs> eye. I mean, un- under their eye, even. And I'd be like, okay, like, throw in the towel. Yeah, first takedown. Yeah. Uh, stop! Stop the fight! Stop hitting her! Her back hit the, t- the canvas. Stop! What do you, what do you think? Uh, I would say, I mean, I don't know. And that, I'm, I, it's hard to say because I feel like the other argument is she didn't have to take all that other damage in the fifth round. It's the same result, right? She yeah. was already losing was already so much losing at that four. point. But also... You're yeah. hoping for that lucky the shot. shot. That's happened so many times in this sport. Yeah, but... the but, only thing is the fighter, she straight up said, I don't, I want it, I'm done. I'm done. She was... And a, mm. a fighter, you know, I don't know. In boxing, I, it's more, way more common for the... And it, no one, it's just not frowned upon in boxing when you throw in the towel. It happens so many times. Yeah, but also, like, Raquel Pennington was a... Like, she was hard to, to beat. She's a really tough girl. So for me, knowing how tough she is and for her, for her to say, I'm done, I would probably be like, yeah. okay, she, she's done. Yeah, protect Like, she's not, I, she doesn't seem like one to throw in the towel ever. So I would probably take her word seriously. Yeah, she said she felt like her knee was about to explode. Oh, it was her knee? Or I mean, I think she knew she was losing, but yeah. like she said, like she could not get off on punches because that leg kicks apparently were just like every time she just felt it. Yeah, because it was in the first round she got. Yeah. Those kicks were pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I thought the Calvin Gastelum fight was a good one. That was good. Yeah. But I wanted you know Jacare to. Jacare. I think that's it. That was our MMA minute. MMA Minute with Kyla Cube. See her on One FC in Asia. Mm-hmm. She's going to be the new host. Make it happen. Contact Victor, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone tweet, uh, tweet him. Uh, you can follow Kyla on all social media at... 
Oh, Calamity K. George Kimmel on Instagram, George underscore Kimmel. And Bobby at Bobby Lee Live. And you can follow Tiger Belly at Tiger Belly on Instagram, on Twitter at The Tiger Belly. And email us any un- uh, questions or unhelpful advice at the Tiger Belly at gmail.com. Have a good night or day. Bye. <laughs>